Hi, everybody. This is Nick Meyer from AltHealthWorks.com, and today I'm with my friend Derek Henry from HealingTheBody.ca. Uh, Derek is a longtime health educator who has overcome about 13 different diseases over the course of his uh, his research and his uh, health transformation. And Derek also counsels clients on how to do the same in their lives. And uh, so far, um, he's helped about help people to overcome about 20 different health conditions that modern medicine oftentimes just gives up on. So Derek, uh, thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, today we're going to talk about digestion. Yeah, whatever you want to talk about, Nick, but uh, digestion is certainly one of my specialties. So if we want to talk about digestion today, let's do that. Sounds good. Um, so can you, can you talk a little bit about digestion in terms of the mainstream consciousness? Uh, it seems like, you know, people will talk about eating healthy, people will talk about eating your vegetables, um, eating organic, things like that, um, avoiding GMOs and chemicals in your food. But at the same time, it seems like not many people are talking about how to digest your food properly and exactly what that can do for your health. Um, can you talk about why that is so overlooked in the in mainstream nutrition and mainstream uh, health, you know, among mainstream health practitioners? Yeah, you know, I think um, it's part of the evolution, I think, really, just we haven't got there yet. I mean, there was times, you know, 10, 15 years ago, we could say that most people didn't even think that nutrition actually really even mattered, that you could just eat basically what you want and however, whatever body you end up with just was poor genetics or poor luck. Um, and now we've come to understand that nutrition does play a very important role, a vital role uh, in your health. And, um, you know, and further to that, we've discovered that nutrition can actually help people overcome serious disease processes. And, you know, so I think we're kind of we're kind of up to that point now where people are just, you know, the front, the leading edge people are starting to figure that out. There's still a lot of people who don't understand the importance of food and how it can actually heal your body. But I think on the front edge, a lot of people that are there, they now understand that that's the case. So we've been kind of evolving and, you know, now we're at the point where you know, many of us understand that food is important um, in terms of being able to maintain and reverse health conditions. But now it's the next, probably the next step for people to understand is that not all food that we eat um, is necessarily properly digested. And if, if food is not properly digested, then the efficiency of those nutrients getting to your body is severely compromised. So I've talked to you about this before, and I've said this before that, you know, a very common saying that people will use is, you are what you eat. And I would agree with that to an extent that yes, just as we described, you are what you eat. But you aren't so much as what you eat as you are what you digest. So all that different types of food you're eating, even if you're eating whole foods, whole clean foods, it's very important to make that distinction because most people think, well, I don't eat fast food, I eat whole foods. That's awesome, that's, that's progression in the right direction, that's perfect. But there's a, plenty of whole foods which people on the leading edge of digestion are starting to understand that aren't always easy for people to break down and assimilate. Yeah. Now, why is that a big deal? Well, if you're not absorbing the nutrients in your food into your body, into the areas that require them, then you're not going to facilitate um, the proper function of those different organs and glands and systems and tissues. It's just not going to happen. So a quick, a quick way to describe that, if you're eating something, you know, a lot of people will think, well, I'm having a protein powder actually would be a good example because we talk a lot about protein. And maybe someone's picking up their, their soy protein powder and it's got 37 grams of protein per scoop or something. You're thinking to yourself, that's it. I need 37 grams of protein. Why we think that, I'm not sure. But yo, I need 36 grams of protein right now of soy protein isolate. I'm going to do this. You're assuming that you're going to digest 37 grams of soy protein isolate. The reality is, for the majority of people, and even in, in the case of soy protein isolate, probably everyone, but most people are dealing with some kind of digestive issue. Just due to the nature of the toxins we've inherited, the infections that we've had, you know, fungal infections, parasite infections, bacterial infections, all those things end up screwing up our inner ecology, our microbiome. So when you're eating those 37 grams that you think of protein, your digestive system may not be breaking them down properly. And if they aren't, then you're actually not getting what you think you're getting on the label. And the same thing can go for whole food sources. There's lots of whole food sources um, yeah. that could be more difficult on the body to digest. And if you don't, then you're simply not, you're not getting the fuel 
as much of that fuel as you should into your body. And so that's the first concern that you don't get those nutrients. Second concern is anything that's left over um, could create toxicity in your body because it could create, uh, it could feed other microorganisms that feed off of what's left over, like parasites. Think like a vulture feeding off the side of the road. So it's, it's kind of gross sounding, but it is that they're going to feed off that. So you're helping those parasites, bacteria, fungi, whatever's in there, you're feeding them and you're allowing them to maintain their position in your intestinal tract, allowing them to grow yeah, and to thrive. Products from, from these, uh, these compounds being broken down in your body, like the byproducts, uh, from, from that whole process too, for that, doesn't that add even more toxicity? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's a pretty ugly process when you think about it. If you don't, if you're not, if you're not officially burning your fuel, there's going to be fuel, there's going to be stuff left over, there's going to be trash left over that's going to yeah. feed microorganisms or end up staining your intestinal system and then eventually kind of, for lack of a better way to put it, rotting like garbage in your intestinal system. Well, you can imagine that that's not healthy um, to, to, for that to remain in your intestinal system. So this is why burning, breaking down every single nutrient, getting all the stuff that's required into your blood and in, you know, into your different organ systems and glands and whatever you don't need comes out your normal elimination systems. That's the perfect way that would happen if your digestion worked perfectly. Unfortunately, as we're discovering, many people have digestive issues, whether diagnosed or not, and, but they're seeing many symptoms like bloating and um, you know, constipation, brain fog. There's lots of different things that you could feel when you don't digest properly, lack of energy. and um, this is part of the digestive process that's, that's not going effectively. And if you don't have the proper digestive infrastructure, like enzymes, probiotics, certain minerals, things like that, then um, you're going to have some of these issues. Yeah, I think this is something that uh, so many people still don't realize. Um, I know that I had a lot of digestive issues when I was younger before I gave up uh, GMOs and started eating organic. and um, I think uh, a lot of times one of the biggest things is you have to be in the right state, the right metabolic state to be able to to process these foods. Um, um, can you talk a little bit about that and maybe talk about like uh, four different, maybe like four different uh, things people can do to improve their digestion starting tomorrow? Yeah, sure. Um, I think the first thing that people should consider is the mental state that they're in. That's actually where the digestive process begins, and most people might it might seem counterintuitive. Um, but the state that you're in, whether you're relaxed or you're stressed, I mean, a lot of people do stress eating, right? A lot of people, you get stressed, you eat, right? Or you drink, right? This is a very common thing. You know, you get stressed, I'm going to eat a barrel full of chocolate, and I'm going to drink a bottle full of wine. Um, you know, things like that. And, and when you, when, I always tell people, if you eat something that's not on, the, on your menu or it's something that's not healthy, the worst thing you could do on top of that is to stress about it. Because when you stress, the whole body becomes acidic. It gets, it's, it becomes contracted, and this is not going to facilitate a smooth flowing digestive process. So the first thing is, don't you try as much as, as possible not to um, eat under a stress condition or eat in a hurried state where you're shoveling food in so fast that your your digestive system can't keep up. It's di food is meant to be enjoyed and to, meant to be you know like I said. A lot of people will say you need to chew your food 30 times. It basically has to be mush before you allow it to digest um, properly. And I, I think most people would say, well, I'm not going to chew my food 30 times. And I agree, probably most people aren't going to do that. But be conscious about that. You know, Take the time to chew your food properly and be in a more relaxed state. That would be the first thing to start the digestive process, process off in the right direction. Um, the second thing is you want to make sure that your, your stomach acid is in good condition. This is kind of the first area where food hits, and the stomach acid is good for killing off you know, microorganisms. So if there's something in your food um, and you have strong stomach acid, that's kind of the first gateway that things have to pass through. And they can, those things can be burned off, which is obviously extremely helpful. But also, um, that's the first stage of breaking down your food. So you want to make sure that part of the assembly line goes effectively. If it doesn't, then you're going to hand it down to the next stage, and, it's, and their process is not going to be completed. So now you're going to put more pressure on the other areas, and this is where the dominoes start to fall. So what, what could you do for that? Um, I would say avoid drinking lots of water right before you eat. Um, you know, no more than a half an hour before I wouldn't be drinking water or any, or any beverage for that matter uh, because that's going to dilute the process. Um, I would also wouldn't drink during um, unless you're drinking certain things um, that could help break down food. Um, maybe a probiotic beverage or an enzymatic beverage, maybe a little bit of that. But generally speaking, you don't want to drink lots of water and stuff before, um, during, or even immediately after that you're finished eating. 
Um, but what you could do is something like take a apple cider vinegar shot. You could put that in a little bit of water if you want it um, because apple cider vinegar has plenty of enzymes. It has plenty of HCL in terms of a food format. Um, so that could help the digestive process just by taking a shot of that. Or you can also pair foods with certain things um, like sauerkraut or kimchi. Uh, again, things that have lots of enzymes, probiotics, and um, that acid, that HCL that'll help with the breakdown of your food. So having that paired with your food, you can have it before, but you also could pair it with your food because it goes with a lot of different types of things. So when you're eating that, you're helping the other food break down more appropriately. So that's a yeah. couple different things you could do. Um, a very common one that people would do is take digestive enzymes, um, which you could do. Like I said, you could eat your enzymes like that, or you could take digestive enzymes, and you could also take hydrochloric acid. Um, you could take a couple, you could take one of each before you eat your meal. You could take a digestive enzyme and a hydrochloric acid um, capsule, and you could take those two things before um, so that you digest your food properly. Um, another big thing that many people overlook is don't stuff yourself. If you're going to stuff yourself to 100, 110% full, there's going to be an issue. There's not enough area there for that food to metabolize and to work its way through properly. So a general rule of thumb is, you know, kind of eat till you're 80% full, till you're you're satisfied, you feel good, and don't. And I know a lot of us have. I think we know what overdoing it is. Just think Thanksgiving or Christmas. That's when we usually overdo it. It's like, oh, but that looks so good, and then when you're done, it's like you want to pop open the top button because it's all over, right? Your belly's gonna start to hang out, and you're feeling like you're feeling that pressure on your gut. You've eaten too much. Um, you, you should feel about 80% full, you should feel satisfied that you're full, but not too full. And that's another great uh, way to make sure that your digest digestion goes more smoothly. So, yeah. um, I mean, I think that was that would be probably my, that would be my key, the key things that you would probably really wanna zero in on the beginning. Of course, there's lots of other things to do, things to avoid, certain food combinations aren't so great for each other. You mean, eating yeah. sugar and stuff like that with meals is gonna cause some issues. Yeah, there's lots of different kinds of things, but. I mean, those are some key ones if you want digestion to go smoothly um, to incorporate those into your into your meal planning. Yeah, I think uh, it's something that um, takes a lot of practice and takes a lot of a lot of thought before you basically put the food in your mouth. Um, so many people are used to just taking mashed potatoes, meat, uh, uh, vegetables, uh, just combining every single food group into one thing, and then drinking like a big glass of uh, soda pop to mm -hmm. down the whole meal. Yeah. Um, it, you can understand why they would have so many digestive issues. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, so can you talk a little bit about the Thrivers diet and uh, how it addresses the um, digestive, digestive challenges that so many people face and uh, talk about, um, talk about the book a little bit? Sure. Um, yeah, the Thrivers Diet was created really specifically to enhance and to optimize the digestive system because, uh, in my opinion and in many other people's opinions, the, the, the digestive system is the gateway to health. So um, if it's not operating effectively, you're going to be in poor health. If it's operating great, you're going to be in good health, generally speaking, um, because we're eating you know several times a day and everything's passing through there. And again, as we, as we discussed before, whether that goes good or bad, it's going to determine what kind of nutrients you get in your system and whether path, you know, pathogenic organisms you might feed that you don't want to be there. So the Thrivers Diet is really um, about eating clean, whole, you know, organic, obviously, as much foods as possible that are very easy on digestion and allow you to have the proper uptake of the vitamins, minerals, probiotics, enzymes, you know, all those different nutrients that are required for a healthy body. So there's definitely some some details there that need to be sorted out and a lot of most diets that I have watched or followed do not take digestion into consideration. They just they simply don't, not many of them do. Um, it, it's simply eat this kind of food group or really focus on, you know, this specific category or segment of food and focus on that. Um, you know, this, this, the Thrivers Diet focuses on all food groups, you know, all of them that are there because they're all important. Um, but we focus on them in a way that they're going to be easy, easily digestible. And this doesn't mean that you're going to be on astronaut food during the Thrivers Diet where everything is going to be purified and liquefied um, to an extent that, you know, you basically can suck it through a straw. Is there some of that? Sure there is. There's some of that stuff that's great. Um, you know, smoothies is a good example. 
Um, you know, and most people that are on the health train are usually have been drinking smoothies or juices. Um, you know, that's a, that's a very common thing for people to reach for, which is a great thing, especially when you make them properly. Um, so with the Thrivers Diet, really we've combined all these great nutritious and delicious foods and brought them together in a plan uh, and into recipes that make sure that we, we stroke off all the things we want to stroke off. We want our food to be enjoyable. We want it to be relatively easy to prepare. Um, we want it to be fairly simple. It doesn't, we don't want to have to import an exotic fruit from Thailand to be able to do this diet, right? This is all stuff that's pretty, pretty simple, basic stuff. But it's all put together in a way that's going to not only be easy on digestion, but it's also going to flood your body with various types of nutrients that's going to allow your body to optimize its functions. And when that starts to happen, then the body just starts to naturally heal itself. This is kind of the way it goes. So I didn't... I, diet, dieting wasn't meant to be complicated, in my opinion, but what I'm seeing out there today is that dieting has become extremely complicated. People are measuring, they're analyzing, they're counting yeah. calories, they're weighing, they're watching this thing like it's their job. It's about sustainability, too. Um, you know, and if you do slip up a little bit, it's just like, just go back onto it. It's a, it's a very overall sustainable diet. And when people are done the diet and they feel better, there's different things they can start to bring in and transition things back in that have been taken out because they're hard on digestion. They're not going to assist in you getting that energy back and reversing that, you know, chronic disease condition that you want to reverse. Um, so there's stages to it. But I find, again, some of these, some of the other diets are not easily sustained. I've watched people try to do certain types of diets. And they're so difficult because you have to be, like you said, you're counting calories or you're weighing, you're analyzing, you're doing all these things. And it's just not something that you're going to do for the rest of your life. Now, and I think most people don't go on a diet typically so that they can fall off of it. Um, you know, some people might do it to get in shape for a certain thing like a wedding or something like that. But I think most people want, they want to feel good all the time and they want to be able to sustain something. But they want it to be somewhat simple, something that they can do that's not going to cost them, you know, a couple hours a day yet. Many people are doing those types of diets where like I said, it's a full-time job um, to keep track of what you're trying to do. And to me, eating wasn't meant to be that way. It's meant to be enjoyable. Um, you know, healthy food isn't meant to be what most people, a lot of people think it is, which is bland, you know, gross, disgusting. It's not. Once you start eating these types of foods and eating them regularly, you're gonna ch your, your, te your palate's going to change. And there's lots of ways to make the foods that maybe you've had in the past taste really good. You just need to understand the recipes and different things to do to make these foods taste better. Um, so that you can get the health benefits, but you also can enjoy the process and, and enjoy the deliciousness of food as well. And uh, just one last thing, Derek, before we uh, sign off here, can you can you talk a little bit about um, some of the some of the features of the Thrivers Diet as far as helping people to improve digestion? And um, I think you've helped uh, people reverse uh, IBS and Crohn's disease before. Yep. Yes. Um, I mean, I think the main features of the Thrivers Diet is you, you're going to get a list of foods that you don't eat, um, and you're going to get a list of foods that you do eat, and then you're going to get it broken down into, I guess, categories in terms of these are the types of foods that we're going to eat, and then you'll have it broken down into a daily plan of this is kind of the foods that you can look at for breakfast, for a snack, for lunch, for dinner, things like that, and then you'll also um, get a recipe book, again, this will be... Uh, an electronic book uh, of approximately 70 different recipes, uh, many of them that are used in the Thriver's Diet. And there's also recipes on there that you can use post Thriver's Diet. When you maybe transition back to your old diet, you'll be able to have other healthy food uh, remedy or recipes that you can move forward with that when you transition back um, to bringing some of the foods back into your system to see what you can handle, what you can't. Once you've, once we've, uh, as I always say, once you've reset your digestion a bit and you've built up the infrastructure so they can digest food better, then you can start to bring some foods back in that maybe you're going to be able to handle a little bit easier if you do the, the Thriver's Diet portion of the diet appropriately. And um, I also believe there's a few um, supplements in there as well um, that we already kind of talked about and just some highly sourced supplements that I've used with my clients because, as you know, not all supplements are created equal as well. So um, those are in there as well. So that if you want to use those as part of the diet, you can as well. All right, Derek. Well, thank you so much for joining us, and uh, I really appreciate you coming on and talking about the digestion and Thrivers Diet today. Um, if anybody wants to check out the Thrivers Diet, they can check out the links uh, in the description part of this video. And this has been Nick Meyer from AltHealthWorks.com. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, and have a great day.